Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janavalla Bha Giri Varad Hari Jai Gopi Janavalla Bha Giri Varad Hari Yashoda Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Banachari Jamuna Tira Banachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Ah, Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Mr. Pad Padamahansa Padarujaka Charja Ashtoto, the Sri Srimad, the Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Prabhupada Jai. Iskan B.B.T. Founder Charja Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai O Mishnupad Paramahansa, Padarujaka Charja Ashtoto, the Sri Srimad, the Divine Grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai. Ananta Koti Vaishnava Niki Jai. Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Kijai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glory to Sri Guru and Goranga. Okay. So, Tapas, you with us? Which is the verse? Yes, sir. Verse verse 27. It's 27? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. On this 28th day of June, 2022 in San Diego, which is the glorious disappearance day of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Srila Gadadar Pandit. We are reading from the Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And this, this uh, chapter is entitled Transcendental Knowledge and the verse number is 27 at the top of page 214. Oh, and we request, please don't put the the uh, sign, hello, hello, ha, Haribol. 
Hare Krishna. Yeah, we don't want to put that on the ground. No sacred words go on the floor. No, but not, not on there either where people sit. Just put it on the top of the Gita there. That's fine. Hare Krishna. Okay. Sarvanindriya. Sarvanindriya. Karmani. Karmani. Prana Karmani. Prana Karmani. Chapare. Chapare. Atma Sangyamya. Atma Sangyamya. I'm sorry. Atma, sam, atma Sangyama. Yoga now, Jufadi, Gana Deepite, Sarvan Indriya Karmani, Prana Karmani Chapare, Atma Sangyama Yoga now, Jufadi, Gana Deepite, Page two fourteen. Sarvan Indriya Karmani, Sarvan Indriya Karmani, Prana Karmani Chapare, Prana Karmani Chapare, Atma Sangyama Yoga now, Atma Sangyama Yoga, Juvadi Gyana Deepite, Juvadi Gyana Deepite, Sarvan Indriya Karmani, Sarvan Indriya Karmani, Prana Karmani Chapare, Prana Karmani Chapare, Atma Sangyama Yoga now, Juvati Gyana Deepite Sarvan Indriya Karmani Prana Karmani Chapare Sangyama Yoga Agnao Deepana Deepite Sarvan Indriya Karmani Atma Sangyama Yoga Agnao Jupadi Gyana Deepite Sarvan Indriya Karmani Sarvan Indriya Karmani Prana Karmani Chapare Prana Karmani Chapare Atma Samyama Yoga Agnao Atma Sangyama Yoga Agnao Jupadi Gyana Deepite Jupadi Gyana Deepite Ladies Sarvan Indriya Karmani Prana Karmani Chapare Prana Karmani Chapare Atma Sangyama Yoga now Atma Sangyama Yoga now Juvati Gyana Deepite Juvati Gyana Deepite Anyone on Zoom? Sarvani Indriya Karmani Sarvani Indriya Karmani Prana Karmani Chapare Prana Karmani Chapare Atma Samyama Yoga now Atma Sangyama Yoga now Juvati Gana Deepite Juvati Gana Deepite Word by word meanings Sarvani of all Indriya the senses Karmani functions Prana Karmani functions of the life breath Cha also upare others Atma Sangyamya Asamyama of controlling the mind, yoga, the linking process, agnau, in the fire of juvadi, offer jnana dipite, because of the urge for self-realization. Translation, Krishna says to Arjun, others who are interested in achieving self-realization through control of the mind and senses, offer the functions of all the senses and of the life breath as ob oblations into the fire of the controlled mind. Purport. The yoga system conceived by Patanjali is referred to herein. In the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali, the soul is called Pratyagatma and Paragatma. As long as the soul is attached to sense enjoyment, it is called Paragatma. But as soon as the same soul becomes detached from such sense enjoyment, it is called Pratyagatma. The soul is subjected to the function of ten kinds of air at work within the body, and this is perceived through the breathing system. The Patanjali system of yoga instructs one on how to control the functions of the body's air in a technical manner so that ultimately all the functions of the air within, within become favorable for purifying the soul of material attachment. According to this yoga system, Pratyagatma is the ultimate goal, 
This Pratyag Atma is, with, uh, is withdrawn from activities in matter. The senses interact with the sense objects, like the ear for hearing, eyes for seeing, nose for smelling, tongue for tasting, and hand for touching. And all of them are thus engaged in activities outside the self. They are called the functions of the prana vayu. The apana vayu goes downwards. Dhyana vayu acts to shrink and expand. Samana vayu adjusts equilibrium. Udana vayu goes upwards. And when one is enlightened, one engages all these in searching for self-realization. Om jnana timurandrasya jnanandana shalakaya chakshu unmiditam mena tasmai shri gurave namaha I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Sri Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance to him and all members of Sri Parampara. I think we'll close that door and open that door, and it'll be a little quieter. Because open that? Is it, yeah, open that wider and just close that one, because we'll have a better chance of... Hare Krishna. Thanks for coming. Hare Krishna. Thank you. You can just leave that there. Yeah, we'll be all right. Yeah, you can leave the book yeah, anywhere. That's it. Hare Krishna. Hope to see you again. Okay. So what Krishna is uh, explaining here is different kinds of sacrifice. Um, previous verse, he talked about the unadulterated brahmachari sacrificing the hearing process and the senses of the fire of mental control. And the previous verse, uh, he's talking about the sacrifices to worship the demigod. So he's, this is a, a section, he's going to talk about sacrifices all the way until text 34, different kinds of sacrifices one can engage in. And the general purpose of the sacrifice is purification and self-realization. Um, I don't think anyone who's here, who uh, read this the verse we just read, has said, yeah, I'm going to try to do that. And let me see if I can purify the ten airs, you know, and, and the value goes up and down. I don't think so. And so the whole <laughs> idea here is that uh, the general principle in the Vedic culture is that we want, that you want, we want to get out of this world of birth and death. We want to get out of the relative world, which is a source of so much suffering. We're, we're bound here. And there's different processes that have been developed over the years, of thousands of years, in which the basic principle is to purify the, the soul from its entanglement in these various gross and subtle uh, el, uh, aspects of the material energy. And so that's why you say, uh, analyzing the senses, how to uh, uh, withdraw the activities of matter, pratyagatma, how to withdraw the soul from matter. And there's, a, there's this a technical book, Patanjali Yoga, uh, Patanjali who wrote this book on yoga, which is a classic book. And it's, it's accurate, it's, I mean, it works, but it, it's not really so practical in this age and certainly not for the mass of people. This is a Kali Yuga, and the, the, the life airs are being disturbed by all kinds of directions. Uh, the, the very food we eat, the air we breathe, the water we drink, the, the, the sound vibration we hear is filled with the modes of nature and contaminations, and we need a process that's really, really powerful and practical for us. And so Krishna comes as now here he's he's describing the process of ultimately says sarva dharma padajaja don't worry about everything i said in chapter four and five and six you know the technical aspects of yoga you just surrender unto me you just surrender unto me with bhakti and i'll remove all your sinful reactions and ultimately you'll come to me this is the essence the whole thing is there in chapter 18 text 65 and 66 which Krishna says, this is the most confidential knowledge. This is the, 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 the real secret that will solve everything. And it's an open secret. Manmana bhavamad bhakto madhyaji maam namaskuru. Mame vaishasi satyante padijane priyosime. Now it's interesting that this verse is slightly different from the one at the end of chapter 9, which is also the, the, the most confidential knowledge. You should read the the uh, title, and it's reiterated. And, and so he reiterates the same verse. But here in chapter 18, he says, you come to me because you're my very dear friend. 
In chapter 9, he says, you'll come, you'll come to me because you'll be uh, always situated in yoga. You know, he's, he's emphasizing more this yoga thing. But in, in chapter 18, he's speaking directly to Arjuna, you become you're dear to me. And that's really what bhakti is all about. It cuts through all of this, the, the, the technicalities and things that are really too much for us in Kali Yuga. And, and goes to the essence of it is that Krishna is all powerful. He's Yogeshwara. If we can, we can become Krishna's friend, which is what he says in this verse, Pratijane Priyosi me, because you're dear to me, you come to me. You just think of me, be, bow down to me, become my devotee, offer your homage to me, and uh, you'll come to me. And then the very next verse, he says, this is it. Sarva Dharma Pratijaja Mame Kamsharanam Vraja. Give up all these other dharmas I've been speaking about. And you just surrender unto me. I, I guarantee I'll eliminate all of your karma. All of the, you know, aham tvam sarva pape bhyo mokshi yasyami. I'll liberate you from all your sinful reactions. And do not fear. Do not worry. So that's really the essence of it. And Bhagavatam kind of begins at that point. Then it, it expands on this idea of, of, of pure bhakti as the, as the essence of, of dharma and the, the, the way to success in life. And the Chaitanya Charitama even goes further describing the highest levels of, of rasa that one can achieve in, in, in bhakti. So it's like a, a course. And Bhagavad Gita is definitely the first. Begin chapter 2, you're not that body. You know, understand you're a pure spirit soul and you're eternal. And once you, you understand that, then... The, the processes that, are, that come after it in Bhagavad Gita become uh, clear and meaningful. And if you're really serious about surrendering, then Bhag- Bhagavatam is there and the Chaitanya, the whole process is there. But interestingly enough, it's, it's, be, it's made even simpler by the avatar for this age, Lord Chaitanya. You just, it doesn't matter if you're pure or not. You remember in the, in the seventh chapter, Krishna will say, Yesham dundakatam papam jananam punyakarmanam, te dundam mohane maktabhajante manjadavata. If you want to worship me with firm uh, determination, dridavrata, then you have to just perform pious activities. You have to be f- finished with all your sins. Yesham dundakatam papam jananam punyakarmanam, and simply perform pious activities. This piety means bhakti activities in this case. Now, by this means, referring to the previous verse, you become free from the bewilderment of the dualities of this world. This good and bad, pleasure and pain, this is what we're dealing with in the, in the conditioned state, in its different modes of nature. Oh, let me try this and get away from this suffering. I'll, I'll enjoy over here. I have this long-term plan. This is, this is the, the bewilderment. It's called the dvanva moha, the, um, the bewilderment of the, the dualities of this world. How to transcend that? First, first thing is you have to give up the sinful activity and simply perform pious activity, activities of devotion. And then you can get beyond the dualities of this world and worship and practice devotional service with firm determination. Otherwise, it's not possible. You can't do both. You can't be going in two opposite directions at the same time. So here we're going to hear uh, various uh, uh, varieties of jagya. Now, once again, I'm, I'll just refer to that verse in the, in the third chapter, where Chris says very simply, Yagyartat kramano nyatra lokalyam karma bandada. Very nice. It's just half a verse. He's giving a very important principle. It says, work, whatever you do, work means any activity with any of the senses of mind, intelligence, has to be done as a sacrifice for Krishna, for Vishnu. Otherwise, that work binds you to this world. So there's two basic categories of work. One is centered on the false ego. The, 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 and and Prabhupada makes it very clear in the introduction or the preface, I think, to the uh, Nectar of Devotion, that this I, I and mine illusion can, be, can expand a little bit. It's not just I, you know, that's just this body. That's the animal, you know, consciousness. But we have families, you know, you sacrifice for your children and for the welfare, that's fine, you know. Or you expand it into your clan, uh, your greater family, all humanity even. Uh, but that, that's still imperfect. The, the perfection of this uh, expansiveness or, or, or working for the greater good is all of humanity and ultimately centered on Krishna. If, you, if you're serving Krishna, then you're going to be serving humanity. Because what does Krishna want? He wants us to spread his glories, to spread the science of devotional service. That's the best service. And that's for the ultimate benefit of everyone who comes in contact with you. 
So, so this is a, a, such a great process that, that by doing the greatest welfare work for others, you're doing the best uh, uh, welfare work for yourself also. Because Krishna so much appreciates that he gives you so much encouragement, so much realization, and so much uh, good fortune. So the, this, these jagyas, I'm sure as we read these purports, I think we'll find that Prabhupada reminds us that the real jagya of this age is the Sankirtan jagya. That's, that's the easiest, the most powerful, most practical, and it accomplishes all of the purposes that these other uh, sacrifices are aiming at. Okay, any questions on this first verse? Uh, the idea is, uh, the, the, the fire, this, this idea of fire, this, fire means purification. The whole purpose of the yagya is purification of all the different yagyas. But you can get deviated and perform some sacrifice so you can go to the heavenly planets, and that's, that's, uh, that's not going to help you ultimately. So we have to know the, 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 the process of yagya that's practical for us and the goal of yagya. And that will come up in text 34, how we can know that in, in truth. Okay, so now he gives some uh, different categories of yagya. Dravya yagya stapo yagya. Yoga yagya tatapare. Svadhyaya jnana yagyascha. Yatiyak sangshita vrta. Having accepted strict vows, some become enlightened by sacrificing their possessions, and others by performing severe austerities, by practicing the yoga of eightfold mysticism, or by studying the Vedas to advance in transcendental knowledge. Purport. These sacrifices may be fitted into various divisions. There are persons who are sacrificing their possessions in the form of various kinds of charities. In India, the rich mercantile community or princely orders open various kinds of charitable institutions like Dharmashala, Anakshetra, Atiti Shala, Anathalia, and Vidya Pita. In other countries, too. Now, let's see if we can figure out what they are. Now, Dharmashala is a place where itinerants can stay, right? Isn't that like a, 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 a hostel, I think? Anakshetra, obviously, where you feed people, right? That's feeding. Atiti Shala. I'm not sure what that means. Atiti means guest. Guest, guest. It guest comes, house. Uh, yeah, a guest house. And Anatalia. I'm not sure what that is. Anatalia, uh, Those who have no. I'm sorry? Orphanage. 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 People have no. Yeah. And Vidyap, that's uh, education. education. Yeah, yeah. In other countries, too, there are many hospitals, old age homes, and similar charitable foundations meant for distributing food, education, and medical treatment free to the poor. All these charitable activities are called Dravya Maya Yagya. Dravya Maya means with things, you're giving out material things. Um, there, are others, there are others who, for higher elevation in life or for promotion to higher planets within the universe, voluntarily accept many kinds of austerities such as Chandrayana and Chaturmasya. We know Chaturmasya, it's coming up. And Chandrayana, want to go to the moon? These processes entail severe vows for conducting life under certain rigid rules. For example, under the Chaturmasya vow, the candidate does not shave for four months during the year, July to October. And he does not, he does not eat certain foods, does not eat twice in a day, and does not leave home. Such sacrifice of the com comforts of life is called tapol maya yagya. There are still others who engage themselves in different kinds of mystic yogas like the Patanjali system for merging into the existence of the Absolute, or Hatha yoga, or Ashtanga yoga for particular perfections, and some travel to all the sanctified places of pilgrimage. All these practices are called yoga yagya, sacrifice for a certain type of perfection in the material world. There are others who engage themselves in the studies of different Vedic literatures, specifically the Upanishads and Vedanta Sutras, or the Sankhya philosophy. All of these are called Svadhyaya yagya, or engagement in the sacrifice of studies. All these yogis are faithfully engaged in different types of sacrifice and are seeking a higher status of life. Krishna consciousness, however, is different from these because it is the direct service of the Supreme Lord. Krishna consciousness cannot be attained by any one of the above-mentioned types of sacrifice, but can be attained only by the mercy of the Lord and his bona fide devotees. 
Therefore, Krishna consciousness is transcendental. <laughs> so this is a, a, a contrast. Even, even in the, the Vedic uh, studies and the Vedic culture, it's easy to be diverted into uh, material uh, endeavors. The, uh, the endeavor may be more wholesome for the soul. You're not going to commit gross sin and go to hell. But you're not going to really make all, uh, substantial progress in going back to Godhead. This becomes very clear in the ninth chapter, where uh, Krishna, he says, um, those who worship me indirectly, how does that go? I should know this by now. Yeah. Yeah, Trividya. Trividya refers to the three Vedas. I think the three Vedas. Trividya mam soma paputa papa yagya istra swargatim pratyante. He's describing their going to heaven. Those who study the Vedas and drink the Soma juice, seek, seeking the heavenly planets, worship me indirectly. This is important. This is the kind of worship of Krishna, but it's indirect. Purified of sinful reactions, they take birth in the, on the pious heavenly planets of Indra, planet of Indra, where they enjoy godly delights. So if you really get into that, you'll find parts of the Veda describe that, Nanda Nanda in the gardens and some for an enticement. Yeah, I want to go there. You know? And I, you know there's, a, there's a whole process of sacrifice and you know, austerities to do that. But then in the very next verse, Krishna says, Te tam lokam vishalam, chine punye lokam vishanti. That after enjoying godly delights, when they have thus enjoyed vast heavenly sense pleasure, and the results of their pious activities are exhausted. So it's kind of it's a material thing. You build up pious credits. But then when you're in the, in the heavenly planets, you're spending those credits. You're not performing austerities up there. Now you've achieved your goal, and now you're enjoying. That you're just like you, know, you, you work hard, work hard, and you go to a, a, some spa for a couple of weeks, right, for a vacation. And, you know, every time you, you want to go take a dinner, you just put in the credit card. You got money in the bank because you earned it, you know. But after a while, you know, if you keep trying to prolong the vacation, you run out of money. Back to work. So this is, so Krishna says, when, when the pious credits are exhausted, they return to this mortal planet again, the word, planet of death. Thus, those who seek sense enjoyment by adhering to the principles of the three Vedas, the materialistic part of the Vedas, achieve only repeated birth and death. So in other words, he's discouraging it. What you worship, and he, he sums it up there in, in the next verse. Yanti deva vrata devan. Pitrin yanti bhutri vrata. Bhutanti yanti bhuteja. Yanti bhajaji nopima. Whatever you worship, whatever you, you, you're aspiring for, if you follow the proper principles, you'll go there. You'll get that result. But, but the only one that's really worth anything is going to Krishna. Because then you don't have to come back. Otherwise, you remain in entanglement, in you're entangled here. Who's that? They're waiting outside for darshan. Okay. 8.15, darshan. Hare Krishna. Welcome. Looks like you'll be quiet, right? <laughs> darshan at 8.15. We have clear Gita class now. So, he's, he's going through... We read uh, 28 here, right? So different kinds, dravya yagya, tapo yagya, yoga yagya, these different categories of, of sacrifice uh, and study yagya for knowledge. And yata yagya, you have to strive very hard and, and, and take st strict vows in order to f follow them. But it's a deviation, you know? If we get, we, we, Krishna doesn't recommend this ultimately. He's going through here and ultimately he'll come to the essence. Sarva dharma padachidja. I, I explained all this to, to, because people are involved in that. This is 5,000 years ago, don't forget. But ultimately, yeah, surrender unto me, and you know, everything will be provided. That'll come here. All right, one more. Apane jubati pranam. Pranam. Prane panam tatapare. Prana panakati rudva. Pranayama parayana. Pranayama pranayaha. Apade niyatahara. Apade niyataraha. Pranan prane shujuvati. Pranan prane shujuvati. A lot of prana. Sounds like pranayama, right? 
Still others who are inclined to the process of breath restraint to remain in trance practice by offering the movement of the outgoing breath into the incoming and the incoming breath into the outgoing and thus at last remain in trance, stopping all breathing. Others curtailing the eating process offer the outgoing breath into itself as a sacrifice. Purport. The system of yoga for controlling the breathing process is called pranayama and in the beginning it is practiced in the hatha yoga system through different sitting postures. All of these processes are recommended for controlling the senses and for advancement in spiritual realization. This practice involves controlling the airs within the body so as to reverse the directions of their passage. The apana air goes downward and the prana air goes up. The pranayama yogi practices breathing the opposite way until currents are neutralized into puraka equilibrium. Offering the exhaled breath into the inhaled breath is called rechika. When both air currents are completely stopped, one is said to be in kumbhaka yoga. By practice of kumbhaka yoga, one can increase the duration of life for perfection in spiritual realization. The intelligent yogi is interested in attaining perfection in one life without waiting for the next. For by practicing kumbhaka yoga, the yogi increases the duration of life by many, many years. A Krishna conscious person, however, being always situated in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, automatically becomes the controller of the senses. His senses, being always engaged in the service of Krishna, have no chance of becoming otherwise engaged. So at the end of life, he is naturally transferred to the transcendental planet of Lord Krishna. Consequently, he makes no attempt to increase his longevity. He is at once raised to the platform of liberation, as stated in the Bhagavad Gita 1426. One who engages in unalloyed devotional service to the Lord transcends the modes of material nature and is immediately elevated to the spiritual plant platform. A Krishna conscious person begins from the transcendental stage, and he is constantly in that consciousness. Therefore, there is no falling down, and ultimately he enters into the abode of the Lord without delay. The practice of reduced eating is automatically done when one eats only Krishna prasadam, or food which is offered first to the Lord. Reducing the eating process is very helpful in the matter of sense control, and without sense control there is no possibility of getting out of the material entanglement. So this, this is a technical description of this process of breath control. Prabhupada uh, lived in Allahabad for, I think, 13 years. And that's where they have the um, Magh Mela, the Kumbh Mela, all of the, these Melas. And he saw, I think, two of the, of the big ones, the, the, the Kumbh Melas, when millions and millions of people come. And uh, he describes that and, and I think he took his devotees, he took devotees there twice, actually, two of these melas. And they saw these uh, yogis, they come down from the Himalayas, because it's, it's near northern India, not too far. And many of them are naked, and sometimes he said they may look like they're 40 years old, but they're really 400 years old, because they're practicing this breath control. And uh, if you slow down the breathing, Prabhupada once told us you have a certain number of breaths, that are allotted, allotted to you for each life. And so uh, he would point out how it's foolish to, to exercise all the time and you're breathing so rapidly, you know. Of course, on the other side, you may get in fits so you're breathing slower the rest of the day, but whatever. So, so, so these gentlemen, you know, they're, they're actually living proof that the process works miraculously. You know, they look like 40, but they're actually much older. But the, but the interesting thing was, <laughs> is that I read this, I think, in the National Geographic. They, they once had a, an issue, at least on the cover, this is many, many years ago, on the Kumbh Mela. You know, it's an amazing... That's not me, is it? Please, turn, can you turn it off? Hare Krishna. Thank you. Um, so, the, the, uh, the Kumbh Mela. And... Uh, yeah, so, there, so there's different groups of these yogis that come down from the Himalayas, you know. And the whole idea is to bathe in the confluence of the three rivers, two of which are manifest, one which is unmanifest, the Saraswati. Triveni is called. At just the right astrological time, and then you're assured of liberation, you know, right? So it's not going to happen for like 30 million people which come there, you know, obviously. So these yogis, they take pride of precedence, you know. They, they're, they're, 
going to go first. But there's different groups of them, and so there was like a rumble. And one group was fighting the other. They have the, a lot of police there. Actually, they're army guys, you know, because there's millions of people come together. So they have to keep the peace. So what does that show you? It shows that with all of their austerities and with all of their amazing, you know, powers, that they, one of which is prolonging your life, they still haven't developed the, the, the humility and the qualities of the Bhakshana. <laughs> It's like your, your ego becomes quite big. You can imagine. You can fly through the air and live in the 400 years. You can, if, you don't, if you're not serving the Lord and serving the Vaishnavas and getting into that mood, you can, you can become very puffed up. And there's so many examples we have in the Shastra. Durvasa Muni, who, who tried to annihilate Ambarish. He was, why? Because he was very proud. And Ambarish was getting all this honor just, being, just because he was a nice devotee. So each, I'm not going to go into the story, but many of you know it, you know. And Vishwamitra. So just practicing this yoga doesn't necessarily make you advanced in what's necessary to go back to God. You can become very proud of being a powerful yogi. And, and therefore, Lord Chaitanya has this nice formula. One of the verses he taught to Sanatana Swami. Krishna Bhakta Nishkama Ate Eva Shanta Bhukti Mukti Siddhi Kami Sakali Ashanta, that the devotees are free of material desire and therefore they're very peaceful. It's, it's all of these unfulfilled desires that, that, that cause so much agitation in the brain. But if you're enjoying the nectar within by just chanting uh, uh, Hare Krishna and serving Krishna, you can be very peaceful and kind and, and tolerant. But Bhukti Mukti Siddhi Kami, so there's four de- categories of people in the world. The first are the devotees, and there are few. And then there's the bhukti kamis, vast majority of people. They're after gross and subtle sense gratification. They don't know anything about the Vedas, this and that, soul, no. It's bhukti kamis, they're not peaceful. They can never be satisfied. Even the, but even the mukti kamis, mukti kamis are those who realize that this world is completely entangling and I'm trying to get out of birth and death. But their desire is personal. After all, it's a desire to be free of all suffering. That's what, that's what mukti is. No more suffering, birth, death, or relation disease. But that's ultimately a personal desire. Uh, Prahlad Maharaj condemns it. He said, Prayana Deva Munayo, Swava Mukti Kama. Swava Mukti Kama. They're lusty for their own Mukti. But for the most part, the transcendentalists, Muniya, the learned sages, they know the Vedas. And so they leave the cities. They leave all the people alone because it's a distraction. They go off to the mountains and the Himalayas and the forest, you know, to be alone, no people. So I can work on my own liberation. That's selfish. And then there's the Siddhi Kamis, the yogis who practice these processes, pranayama is described, where you can live very long, you can walk on water, you can travel, you can, you know, there's eight cities. You can become smaller than the smallest, uh, bigger than the biggest, you can create a planet, you can do all kinds of things. You can imagine how enticing that would be. And yet, you have these yogis who are so proud of their process. But they're never satisfied. They're fighting with other yogis. They're competing, you know. They're proud, so proud. Why is he getting so much honor? I'm a powerful yogi. That's the lowest kind of conditioning. So nobody can be peaceful and self-satisfied and, except the devotees who are relishing at every moment the pleasure of Krishna consciousness. So that's what we want to aspire for. All right. One more. Sarve pyete yagya bido. Yagya chapata kalmasha. Yagya shishtar matapujo. Yanti brahma sanatanam. All these performers who, who know the meaning of sacrifice become cleansed of sinful reactions and having tasted the nectar of the results of sacrifices, they advance toward the supreme eternal atmosphere. Purport from the foregoing explanation of different types of sacrifice, namely sacrifice of one's possessions, study of the Vedas or philosophical doctrines, and performance of the yoga system, it is found that the common aim of all is to control the senses. Sense gratification is the root cause of material existence. Therefore, unless and until one is situated on a platform apart from sense gratification, there is no chance of being elevated to the eternal platform of full knowledge, full bliss, and full life. This platform is the eternal atmosphere, or Brahman atmosphere. 
All the above mentioned sacrifices help one to become cleansed of the sinful reactions of material existence. By this advancement of, in life, not only does one become happy and opulent in this life, but also at the end, he enters into the eternal kingdom of God, either merging into the impersonal Brahman or associating with the Supreme Personality of God at Krishna. So this is a, a, you know, a very positive view of this. But uh, as we've seen, one can become deviated. You can perform sacrifice uh, for material means, for material goals. And the sacrifice and austerity, they're, they're closely aligned. The, this like, this tap, uh, tapo dana and yagya are three things in the, in the 18th chapter, which does not give them up. You see, There's austerity, sacrifice, and charity. And you see that they're not mutually exclusive. That if you're giving charity... Right? I mean, that's, an, that, that's uh, a sacrifice. You're sacrificing your wealth and your, for, for others, you know. Um, and it's all, it can also be an austerity because it means, oh, I don't have as much to, you know, meet my needs, so it can be an austerity. So, so they're, they're, <coughs> they're meant to be acts of purification, but they can be mis, uh, uh, also done for other means, just like, perfect example, Aranyakashipu. Who could perform that such an austerity? We can't even conceive of it. Hundreds of years standing with his hands up, you know, and, and the ants are coming to eat me. I don't care. Let them eat me. And he had the power to keep his, himself alive, circulating his, his, his prana within the bones. Who can, can conceive it, you know? But he became so powerful, he, he had a nefarious motive. He wanted to kill God, you know? And so he's, come, and he's emanating this fire, and the dem- demigods are upset. They go to Brahma, he comes down, and you know, you know the story. So austerity can be used for uh, nefarious purposes. And other things, too. Uh, charity. Charity can be given, just like it's, it's mentioned that the, uh, one of the first qualities of the demons in 16th is Dumba. Dumba is, 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 means um, Pretending to be very religious, you know, so that people will respect you. It, it's false pride. It's, it's, it's establishing a false uh, outer uh, at, uh, aspect, so that you, you'll have you'll be known as a, as a uh, religious person, when actually you're a demon. You know, <laughs> that's Dumba. So uh, th- that kind of that the kind of contamination can be there. The, the charity is being used, just like you had these guys in the early 19th century. Uh, Carnegie, I think he was the one who was, was the oil magnate, Rockefeller. I mean, maybe he was, uh, there was one guy, uh, Car- uh, Carnegie built the uh, railroads, you know. So at the end of their lives, near the end, they said, boy, everyone hates me, you know, because I've been, you know, so let me do some charity. All this library system, you know, the public libraries were started by Carnegie all over the world, all over the country, you know. And he gave a few million dollars, which is a lot of money at that time. And they all have Rockefeller Foundation, you know, like that. You know. So it, it, to look good, you can perform charity. But that's, that's not going to purify you. You're not really making much progress going back to guided. So they can be mi- easily misused. And, um, and even Krishna consciousness can also, you know, you can become a uh, false devotee, you know, for me- different means. So the, the, what really counts is, is uh, your sincerity, your, uh, what's in your heart when you perform these things. And, the, and the, the, the best sacrifice, as we know, is this Sankirtan Jagya. It quickly purifies the soul and establishes one's connection with Krishna, and you become advanced. Okay, what we read, uh, that was 30. All right, so here's a, here's a one-liner. Nayam Lokosya Yagyasya Kutanya Kurush I'm sorry. Nayam Lokosya Yagyasya. Kutanya Kurushatama. Kurusatama. O best of the Kuru dynasty, without sacrifice one can never live happily on this planet or in this life. What then of the next? Purport. Whenever Whenever, uh, whatever form of material existence one is in, one is invariably ignorant of his real situation. In other words, existence in the material world is due to the multiple reactions to our sinful lives. Ignorance is the cause of sinful life, and sinful life is the cause of one's dragging on in material existence. The human form of life is the only loophole by which one may get out of this entanglement. The Vedas therefore give us a chance for escape by pointing out the paths of religion, economic comfort, regulated sense gratification, and at last, the means to get out of the miserable condition entirely. The path of religion, 
or the different kinds of sacrifice recommended above automatically solves our economic problems. By performance of yajna, we can have enough food, enough milk, etc., even if there is a so-called increase of population. When the body is fully supplied, naturally the next stage is to satisfy the senses. The Vedas prescribe, therefore, sacred marriage for regulated sense gratification. Therefore, one is gradually elevated to the platform of release from material bondage, and the highest perfection of liberated life is to associate with the Supreme Lord. Perfection is achieved by performance of yajna, sacrifice, as described above. Now, if a person is not inclined to perform yajna according to the Vedas, how can he expect a happy life e even in this body, and what to speak of another body on another planet? There are different grades of material comforts in different heavenly planets, and, all, and in all cases, there is immense happiness for persons engaged in different kinds of yajna. But the highest kind of happiness that a man can achieve is to be promoted to the spiritual planets by practice of Krishna consciousness. A life of Krishna consciousness is therefore the solution to all the problems of material existence. I just, I just wanted to make one, one point here because um, you just imagine. Imagine uh, Dravida Das back in the day, um, 1971, say. And I, I had no idea about the Hare Krishnas. Uh, but I was interested in the spiritual life, you know, and so I got a Bhagavad Gita, a little, the Penguin edition, minimal purports of anything, you know, you can imagine 700 sentences, not very long. And uh, here I am reading chapter 4, and you know, it's all of these different sacrifices, well, this is far out, you know, I mean, what am I going to get from all that? <laughs> but here Prabhupada, you know, he brings it home in his, in his purport here. You're reading along with uh, the highest kind of happiness that a man can achieve is to be promoted to the spiritual planet by practicing. So why should I bother with all this other stuff? Trying to control the ten, ten airs in the body, you know, and then failing, of course, and then becoming discouraged. But Krishna consciousness, it acts so quickly, it's so powerful, and you're encouraged that this is the highest thing you can do. And the goal is the highest kind of happiness. And you have books and you have examples, like in Srila Prabhupada, of, of a life lived that way. And it's practical. It can actually be done in, in, even in the middle of a big city. Prabhupada proved that when he came to New York. So, uh, basically, you know, we're moving toward this and we're reading about it and, and the, 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 the yagyas and the hatha yoga and all of these things, I, I went through that. I practiced hatha yoga. I was, I was really into that. It was good for my health. You know, it certainly helped me get back. I was, had a serious hepatitis at one point. But ultimately... The, that helped helped me to come to Krishna kindness. Krishna really, you know, he he. he I was looking for a uh, a mantra for meditating because I started out. What am I going to meditate on? They allowed you, you to choose your own mantra. What did I know? So I chose Om. That's easy. Om Om. Have you ever tried to meditate just on Om? It's not so easy. <laughs> so I, I was getting frustrated, and then I went to the bookstore in this yoga institute, I won't name it. And the, apparently the, the, the spiritual master of the yogi who was running this thing had, was in uh, South Africa, because South Africa has a lot of Indians in it. And he started an ashram there. And it just so happened that they had been chanting Hare Krishna mantra for 25 years straight, Akanda Kirtan. Now, I think in the middle of the night, probably I had a rec recording going. I, but, but he said it was going. So they had all these essays about the glories of this Hare Krishna mantra. I had, met the, had not met the devotees yet. And so I said, oh, this is my mantra. This is the one I should do. So I started meditating on Hare Krishna. <laughs> With, with the breathing, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. But it was having its effect, you know, I was feeling pretty blissful. And so when I heard about a temple with Hare Krishna, where they sang the Hare Krishna, oh, let me go visit them, you know, like that. Got a book. So Krishna arranged, you know. So the idea is that once, once you take up the, the process of chanting and the disciplines of bhakti yoga, which is practical for us, right, um, you realize that you've been saved, from all of these other processes which really aren't practical and maybe you can't do much. It's interesting to know about them, you should know the, but the basic principle, the jagya is, it help, it helps with purification of the senses so that it's not engaged in sense gratification. You're chanting Krishna's name, you're taking Krishna's prasadam, you're seeing the deity, you're working for Krishna, and you find that, oh, I'm becoming detached from all these things which I know are bad for me and uh, becoming more attracted to Krishna. 
So we, we've been very much blessed. And Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita, as it is here, is bringing us all to the, to the, to the point. You know, manmanabhava madbhakta. So it's 8.10, but before we close, I'll just give you my little poetic version of those two essential verses. Just, Krishna says, just think of me, become devoted, worship me, and bow down low. You'll come to me, O oh friend, I promise you this boon I shall bestow. Give up all other dharmas and surrender only unto me. Your sins I'll nullify, O oh Arjun, from anxiety be free. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.